Well, your story brings into light this passage that we've been studying on faith found in Romans chapter 12, verse 2. It says, um, uh, don't conform to the um, patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So when you talk about your beginning and story, there's a pattern of this world that you kind of naturally fell right into. Just unintentionally, it just became part, part of who you were and what you were desiring or needing in life. Yeah, it definitely did. Um, from such a young age, I was always following the ways of the world mm -hmm. um, and pursuing you know, everything that the world told me was great and worthy and um, that success was everything and your looks were everything. And um, I was really following what the world called beautiful and um, you know, what they accepted. Uh, and so that's really one of the things that drove me in my modeling career was just pursuing the ways of the world. And that's where my mindset was um, the whole time, you know, until God eventually came into my heart and, yeah. and changed my thinking and my mindset and everything. But do you think you had an awareness um, at age 14 or 15 when this started for you that that's what you were chasing? Uh, did it feel like you were chasing fame, fortune, all that? Or, were, were you able to take a deeper look and say, no, I really crave the attention, the, the compliments, the feeling of being accepted? I mean, what, can you remember back, what, what's a 14 or 15 year old thinking when they start down this road of, of pursuing this fantasy? Well, I was definitely craving the compliments and the attention uh, because with modeling, once you do that first photo shoot, uh, you have the photographers, the hair and makeup people, and everyone around you just telling you, you're so beautiful, you know, you're, you're going to do so great, you're going to become a famous supermodel, and you're getting all these compliments, and then your agency is complimenting you. Um, and so you just start craving that, and you want more and more of it. And then with each photo shoot, you know, you start falling into wanting those compliments and wanting people to tell you that um, and eventually uh, things start changing once you get further and further into the modeling world where you it starts becoming the opposite and they start telling you that you need to lose weight hmm. and so then you fall into um, being so pressured and wanting those compliments and wanting that acceptance again that you're willing to compromise and do things that you wouldn't normally do um, to get back to that point. So at the beginning, it was incredibly exciting and, and met some legitimate need you had in your life of acceptance and mm -hmm. feeling pretty and those kind of things, but it doesn't stay that way. It becomes something really insidious, doesn't it? It definitely does, and uh, it really just brings you to a point of complete insecurity. Um, you know, most of the models that I've come across in the industry are all really insecure. Mm. Uh, when you get to know them and talk with them, they're all just hurting and they're so insecure. And mm. most little girls looking at these models in, in the magazines and the ads, they think that they have everything and they must be so confident because everyone thinks they're so beautiful. And it's really, that's not the case. It's completely opposite. Mm. So along this line, you right about this time when you're 14 or 15 years old, all of a sudden something else begins to go in and works in your life. Not only were you pursuing modeling, but you come to a place of faith. You come to a place where you believe in Christ. How'd that come about? Well, when I was 15, uh, a girl at school just randomly invited me to a church event. And um, I think she noticed that I was kind of moping around and I was pretty depressed at that age in my life um, and so she invited me to church and I went and I just fell in love with all the people there and how accepting they were of me and how they just really wanted to get to know me as a person and they didn't care about the things that the kids at school cared about. They weren't asking you about modeling or they weren't asking you about uh, your next shoot or anything like that. They just wanted to be your friend. Yeah, they just wanted to know my heart and know me as a person and so that's really what drew me into the, the church environment. And then through those relationships in that safe environment, you came to process what it meant to follow Jesus. Uh, do you remember exactly? Did it happen like at, at an, an occasion or was it a process over time for you? Um, it was a process over time, but uh, I ended up getting baptized at a summer camp with the church. And um, that was really just a 
a big defining moment in my life because I was able to um, really finally uh, realize that God forgives me of my sins. Uh -huh. And there were some pretty big sins in my life that uh, I was holding on to and really had a tie into my mm -hmm. life and what was really causing my depression at that age. And so being able to um, feel free of that and know that uh, there was a Savior that loved me so much that He would forgive me of those things, that's really the point in my life where I um, came to know that. Well, when you're um, captured by the patterns of this world, as Paul warns us, it doesn't stay stagnant, it gets worse. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's certainly true. You bring that out in your book, the idea that um, each shoot or has progressively got worse and worse. Tell us, tell us an instance when you realize this is getting way out of hand and I, you know, I can't, I can't do this. All of a sudden, everything became questionable for you. Well, there was one shoot that I did um, for a men's magazine. Mm -hmm. And um, obviously, it's for men. Um, and that shoot really um, held a huge transformation in my heart. And God really used that shoot um, to convict me and show me that uh, everything that I was doing with the modeling world um, was just not honoring my husband. It, was it just, wasn't honoring That him. particular shoot was, uh, you related to that in your book, that particular shoot was, um, made you really feel like a, a possession versus a person. Yeah, it did. That's when I really realized that I was being paid to, you know, pose provocatively for men, um, when really only my husband should be seeing me uh, in the way that I was, was posing and dressing for these men's magazines. And um, this particular shoot, the photographer was really pressuring me um, into doing more and pushing the limit. And uh, when I told him that I didn't want to do these things, he got really mad at me and started yelling at me and telling me that, you know, if I was a Victoria's Secret model, these are the things that I'm supposed to do and these are what the other models do. And that's well, I what can't I'm imagine the pressure of that. And, but what I see is I look through the lens of the scripture of Romans is as compelling as the pattern of this world was on your life. And I think all of us struggle with that, obviously. Mm -hmm. the, the, the renewing of your mind was also incredibly equally more powerful because you walked away. I mean, you said no. I mean, you did something that the world would say and, and many people would say you're crazy. You lived your whole life to achieve what you're achieving and you're going to walk away. But you had had it. That was it. You came home and told Mike, I'm done with this Victoria's Secrets thing. What was that like when you finally decided I'm no longer going to be in that world. I'm going to be in this world where Christ is my God and I'm not going to be led by an idol. What was that like for you on the inside? Did you, what did you feel? Um, I actually felt a lot of peace. Um, most people, you know, come to me and say, that must have been like the hardest thing you've ever done. And um, on one sense, it was hard because I cared a lot what people thought of me. And, you know, with Mike's family, I really wanted to impress them. And I know that my modeling had impressed them. And so it was hard for me um, to know that I was walking away from something where, a lot of people were gonna, you know, judge me for it and think differently of me. And I'm a, I'm, I really struggle with being a people pleaser. And so, on one sense, that was hard. But on the other sense, I just had this incredible peace um, in my heart and knowing that this was, um, it, this was the right decision. And that, really, when you're living a life. Um, of destruction, which I was. I was bringing other people into destruction with my decisions and things that I was doing, um, the t types of photos that I was taking and, and the message that I was sending to young girls. Um, there's no happiness in that. Mm -hmm. And I knew deep down inside that um, leaving that industry was really going to bring me to a place of just complete happiness and mm -hmm. fulfillment and, and just the total satisfaction with, with Christ and knowing that I'm pleasing Him. Well, I'm a, I'm a father of a, a little girl, and, um, which is completely different than being father of my three sons. Mm -hmm. But what advice would you have for dads out there who have a little girl? 
And those little girls grow up to be, you know, middle school girls with a lot of insecurities. What can a dad do to really help their daughters um, uh, address these insecurities and issues and needs in their life? Help us be better dads, Kylie. What can we do? Well, this is um, actually a great part of my book that I talk about um, because I share the story of me and my father. Um, and back when I was, uh, you know, younger and hunting all the time and playing sports, that's really when I had my dad around all the time. And he was taking me out and doing all these things. And um, he really was my first love. Uh, when I grew up, I wanted to marry somebody just like him. And um, he was, you know, one of my best friends and really always there for me and just made me feel so special and like a princess and like most girls, you know, want. And um, when we ended up moving to Las Vegas, um, that's when our relationship changed. And uh, slowly I started seeing my dad less and he started pursuing um, his career more and pursuing money and, and that success in his, in his workplace. And so eventually it grew to a point where I was, you know, maybe seeing him one day a week. Um, that really affected or, you. Did yeah. you know it then? Did you, you knew something was wrong. I mean, you missed your yeah. dad. Yeah, I did. I felt like I, I lost my first love, you know, the, mm. the guy that made me feel so special and like I was his little angel. Um, and I really feel like the relationship between a daughter and her, a father and his daughter is really an important one mm -hmm. because um, I, just, I just look back and see that um, I wanted that so bad. Mm -hmm. And when I, I lost it, when my dad started working and craving that you know, success in his workplace and the money and I started seeing him less, mm -hmm. um, I no longer was getting that, that love and attention that he had once given me. And so I started looking for that in other places. And um, that's when I started dressing provocatively. And that's when I started uh, acting different um, for guys at school. And that's, you well, know, make it, really... Make it simple for... Now, dads aren't the smartest people group in the world, okay? So <laughs> you got to make it simple for... What can we do? Tell me... What can I do with my daughter? What can these dads do with their daughters, especially to uh, meet their needs? God's given them these needs. He has these God-given needs. What can we do? Well, I really, you know, believe in making your daughter feel absolutely special. Um, because if you're not the one making her feel that way, then she's going to look for that from somebody else because, you know, little girls grow up watching Cinderella and all of these, these love stories mm -hmm. and um, they want that. But if their daddy makes them feel that way, if he's taking them out on special father-daughter dates and, you know, talking to them about um, what a, a good relationship looks like, then eventually when they're old enough, you know, they're going to pursue that. They're going to want to marry somebody that is treating them the way that their father treats them mm. and loving them the way that Christ loves them. And so I really believe strongly in, you know, special time with just you and your daughter um, because I think that's so important and, and little girls want that. Teen girls want that. They just want to, they want to be made to feel special. What's one of the most special love. times you remember with your dad? Um, well, in my teen years, I remember him taking me on a hunting trip. And uh, that was really, really special for me because he had been working so much and I had hardly seen him. And he took, you know, that, that time out of his work schedule to take me on a special trip. And that really just meant a lot to me to know that he was, you know, taking the time. Your story reminds me of, of, in this passage of Romans that anytime we replace God with something else mm -hmm. that leads to this destructive thing, but how good is God to, in His grace to welcome us back and to allow us to be still part of His plan even though we've replaced Him. Do you get a sense of God's grace in all this for you? I do. Um, he's shown me so much grace uh, with everything. 
um, everything that's taken place and you know all of the decisions I've made and just so many areas where um, I chose to do something that was obviously just disrespecting him um, and so it's it's amazing to just look back and see how he was still always there always working in me always um, just changing my heart and loving me and um, just showing me that amazing grace that that he does for you know all of the ones that he loves and and that's just something that also just makes it so much more amazing to know that he loves us so much even when we are doing things that are wrong and and you know walking away from him he still loves us